Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Thursday, August 4th, 2022. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. We are now reaching the end of Saul's reign as king over Israel. Throughout his reign, we have seen him move progressively farther and farther away from the Lord. Today, he is faced with imminent battle against the Philistines, and he is terrified. But instead of seeking information from the Lord, he goes to a medium in Endor. And in this, we can see just how far Saul has moved away from the Lord. At the beginning of Saul's reign, he had driven out all the mediums and spiritists from Israel. Now, at the end of his reign, he's seeking out the very mediums and spiritists that he had once driven away. At that time, the Philistines gathered their military units into one army to fight against Israel. So Wachish said to David, you know, of course, that you and your men must march out in the army with me. David replied to Wachish, good, you will find out what your servant can do. So Wachish said to David, very well, I will appoint you as my permanent bodyguard. By this time, Samuel had died. All Israel had mourned for him and buried him in Ramah, his city, and Saul had removed the mediums and spiritists from the land. The Philistines gathered and camped at Shunem. So Saul gathered all Israel, and they camped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the Philistine camp, he was afraid, and his heart pounded. He inquired of the Lord, but the Lord did not answer him in dreams or by the Urim or by the prophets. Saul then said to his servants, Find me a woman who is a medium, so I can go and consult her. His servants replied, There is a woman at Endor who is a medium. Saul disguised himself by putting on different clothes and set out with two of his men. They came to the woman at night, and Saul said, Consult a spirit for me. Bring up for me the one I tell you. But the woman said to him, you surely know what Saul has done, how he has cut off the mediums and spiritists from the land. Why are you setting a trap for me to get me killed? Then Saul swore to her by the Lord, as surely as the Lord lives, no punishment will come to you from this. Who is it that you want me to bring up for you? The woman asked. Bring up Samuel for me, he answered. When the woman saw Samuel, she screamed, and then she asked Saul, why did you deceive me? You are Saul. The king said to her, don't be afraid. What do you see? I see a spirit form coming up out of the earth, the woman answered. Then Saul asked her, what does he look like? An old man is coming up, she replied. He's wearing a robe. Then Saul knew that it was Samuel and he knelt low with his face to the ground and paid homage. Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? Samuel asked Saul. I'm in serious trouble, replied Saul. The Philistines are fighting against me, and God has turned away from me. He doesn't answer me anymore, either through the prophets or in dreams. So I've called on you to tell me what I should do. Samuel answered, since the Lord has turned away from you, and has become your enemy. Why are you asking me? The Lord has done exactly what he said through me. The Lord has torn the kingship out of your hand and given it to your neighbor David. You did not obey the Lord, and did not carry out his burning anger against Amalek. Therefore, the Lord has done this to you today. The Lord will also hand Israel over to the Philistines along with you. Tomorrow, you and your sons will be with me and the Lord will hand Israel's army over to the Philistines. Immediately, Saul fell flat on the ground. He was terrified by Samuel's words, and was also weak because he had not eaten anything all day and all night. The woman came over to Saul, and she saw that he was terrified and said to him, Look, your servant has obeyed you. I took my life in my hands and did what you told me to do. Now please listen to your servant. Let me set some food in front of you. Eat, and it will give you strength so you can go on your way. He refused, saying, I won't eat. 
But when his servants and the woman urged him, he listened to them. He got up off the ground and sat on the bed. The woman had a fattened calf at her house, and she quickly slaughtered it. She also took flour, kneaded it, and baked unleavened bread. She served it to Saul and his servants, and they ate. Afterward, they got up and left that night. The Apostle Paul has begun talking to the Christians in Corinth about the proper use of our rights and privileges as Christians. Today, Paul is going to use himself as an example of someone who had certain rights as an apostle, and yet for the sake of others, did not always make use of those rights. Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If I am not an apostle to others, at least I am to you, because you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. My defense to those who examine me is this. Don't we have the right to eat and to drink? Don't we have the right to be accompanied by a believing wife like the other apostles, the Lord's brothers and Cephas? Or do only Barnabas and I have no right to refrain from working? Who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and does not eat its fruit? Or who shepherds a flock and does not drink the milk from the flock? Am I saying this from a human perspective? Doesn't the law also say the same thing? For it is written in the law of Moses, Do not muzzle an ox while it treads out grain. Is God really concerned about oxen? Isn't he really saying it for our sake? Yes, this is written for our sake, because he who plows ought to plow in hope, and he who threshes should thresh in hope of sharing the crop. If we have sown spiritual things for you, is it too much if we reap material benefits from you? If others have this right to receive benefits from you, don't we even more? Nevertheless, we have not made use of this right. Instead, we endure everything so that we will not hinder the gospel of Christ. Don't you know that those who perform the temple services eat the food from the temple, and those who serve at the altar share in the offerings of the altar? In the same way, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should earn their living by the gospel. For my part, I have used none of these rites, nor have I written these things that they may be applied in my case. For it would be better for me to die than for anyone to deprive me of my boast. For if I preach the gospel, I have no reason to boast, because I am compelled to preach. And woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this willingly, I have a reward. But if unwillingly, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? To preach the gospel and offer it free of charge, and not make full use of my rights in the gospel. Although I am free from all and not anyone's slave, I have made myself a slave to everyone in order to win more people. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win Jews. To those under the law, like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, to win those under the law. To those who are without the law, like one without the law, though I am not without God's law, but under the law of Christ, to win those without the law. To the weak I became weak in order to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that I might, may by every possible means save some. Now I do all this because of the gospel, so that I may share in the blessings. Don't you know that the runners in the stadium all race, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way to, uh, to win the prize. Now everyone who competes exercises self-control in everything. They do it to receive a perishable crown, but we an imperishable crown. So I do not run like one who runs aimlessly, or box like one beating the air. Instead, I discipline my body and bring it under strict control, so that after preaching to others, I myself will not be disqualified. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace.
Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.